Good morning. Morrison's is selling off its convenience stores and today we'll find out how it's been doing over the last six months. I'll have the latest for you. A donkey, <laughs> eh? A rusty donkey at Do you that. know, that's a story that stood out to me when I was meant to be looking at business stories. Look at this one. This is Ollie the donkey, also auditioning. There was a whole queue of donkeys outside the theatre going into auditions. How do you auditions. distinguish between a, a, a good donkey actor, actress? What, did, what's your donkey called? Ollie. Did Ollie get through or not? Cause well, this, I thought you said I Rusty was, yes, I was I was just checking because Rusty... Rusty and Ollie. OK, maybe there's a whole load of donkeys in What do you call a load of group of donkeys? Do we know? Someone will tell us. Yeah, find is out. Heard? I don't know. Right, we'll find out. Anyway, I better move on to business news, which is what I'm actually here for. Morning, everybody. Most of the papers have picked up on, and this is about Morrison's. It's decided to sell off its uh, convenience stores. It's 140 M local stores has been sold to private investors. It's uh, a deal there. Uh, worth £30 million. It's getting £25 million in cash uh, for the business and it, this, this shot and, and it's just saying here, you know, what difference might this make uh, to the supermarket scene? I'm going to be talking about that later on in the programme. There's another story I want to mention as well, another high street name, Sports Direct. There's lots of talk about that at the moment. There's a picture there in The Guardian of protesters outside of Sports Direct's headquarters uh, and they're protesting about the conditions for staff and they're, they're saying here it's uh, uh, Dickensian practices at uh, Sports Direct, of course, denying this. And there's a bit of an argument going on at the moment uh, about how staff are treated and some investors are unhappy about it. Um, so there you go. That's what's going on in business. Lots about the high street uh, today. A group of donkeys. Yeah. A herd. Oh, or oh, right. a pace. A pace. You could have a pace of asses. There we go. Don't know how to follow that. There you know. <laughs> and let's see time and thanks, Steph. See you later on. Rid of their convenience stores. Morning, everyone. Yeah, they're selling off 140 uh, smaller stores to a group of private investors. Also today, we'll find out how some other big high street names have been doing over the last few months with results out from Home Retail Group, which runs Argos and Homebase. Also next, John Lewis, Dunelm and the technology retailer Dixon's Carphone. Uh, they'll give us an update too. So it's certainly going to be a busy morning in terms of high street news. So, what are we expecting? Well, with me is Julie Palmer, who's a retail analyst from Beg Beast Trainer. Good morning to you, Julie. So, let's start with Morrison's. This is part of a turnaround plan, isn't it? It is. Um, it's part of an ongoing turnaround plan, and I think we might be seeing the very early shoots of it. Um, I think the market update today is going to be disappointing in terms of profits, but I think we will see positive signs in the sense that they're beginning to move the, the business hopefully in the right direction, albeit they've got an awfully long way to go from where they are at the moment. So what do you think is going to happen to these stores? Um, they've effectively uh, sold them on. Um, there isn't going to be a huge change in the sense they're going to be called my stores, so the sign writers are going to have an easy job just putting a little Y in the title. <laughs> um, and I think the intention is on the part of the acquirer. They will use that as a platform to build a, a bigger base of convenience stores and really try and make a move into that market. And, and are they profitable, do you think? Uh, uh, stories vary. Um, one says that they're marginally profitable, another that they're loss-making. I think part of the problem for Morrison's is they were very late to the party in that game and it was a bit of a panic buy. So they bought in a lot of unattractive sites from the likes of uh, HMV and Blockbuster when they lost their store portfolio. So panic buy by Morrison's that hasn't really worked out. And it feels like Morrison's has been behind the party with quite a few things because if you look at online as well, they mm. were pretty late to the game with that. Do you, what, what do you think is going on there? Are they just too late generally? They are. They're a little bit old fashioned in their approach to things um, and haven't been as cutting edge as some of the other retailers. Uh, they are trying to drag their business a little bit into the modern age. There's a lot of good things about Morrison's, that they're not very slick in terms of selling themselves. They've got a great story in terms of the vertically integrated supply chain and the provenance of where their product comes from. That just doesn't get well publicised to the public. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, with heightened uh, awareness about the plight of farmers, I think that's something that the public would be supportive of. Mm. So Morrison's should actually be a lot more slick in terms of publicising that aspect of its business. Looking at the other results, certainly a busy day for the retail world. Mm. What, what, what are you expecting to hear, do you think? Um, there might be one or two um, successes out there. Um, Dixon's Carphone, I think that was a really interesting merger that raised a lot of eyebrows in the city. Um, we are, I think, going to see some fairly good results coming through from them. The rest of them, though, mixed bag, potentially on the negative side. August has been a fairly awful month for retailers, and typically August bank holiday came right at the end of the month, so a number of purchases will have been postponed till September. 
Also, the pound against the euro has meant a lot of people have taken last-minute uh, budget trips to Europe. So we've not been getting the tourists in, and the money has been spent yeah. in Europe instead of the UK. So August is predicted to be the worst uh, month for retail since 2008. So mm. difficult times for retailers still at yeah, the moment. Interesting. Julie, thank you very much for your time this morning, and I will have those results for you shortly after 7. That's it for me for now. OK, Steph, thanks very much. Good morning, Argos, Homebase, John Lewis and Next are some of the high street names who will be publishing their latest financial results in a few minutes. I'll be looking at how they're doing. We've had some breaking news from the supermarket group Morrison. Steph's looking into it. Morning, Steph. Yes, morning to you both. We knew that the results were coming out, but we certainly didn't expect here that they're going to be closing stores. They've just announced that 11 supermarkets will close, and that's going to put 900 jobs at risk. They had their financial results out this morning. We know to the six months to the end of August that uh, sales were down there, down 2.7%. And uh, they're saying this morning, you know, that's compared to the same period last year. And it's just b and more bad news for Morrison. Since yesterday I talked about, uh, we found out that the they're going to be selling off the convenience bit of the business, so they're selling off 140 M local stores. These are the ones that you normally see, the smaller stores that you'll see uh, on the high street, and they, um, they're, they've sold those to a private investor that's led by the retail uh, entrepreneur Michael Green, so that they're selling off that bit of the business as well. That's worth something like £25 million. It's quite interesting because we were talking about the, the local stores being, the convenience stores being, being sold, and that was expected, but what does this say about the, the general um, retail environment? Well, Morrison's has been behind the party for quite a long time in terms of uh, the online business. It came very slow to the offering with that and also with the convenience stores. And uh, I was talking to one retail analyst earlier who was saying actually they bought the convenience stores in a bit of a hurry um, and that means some of them aren't in great locations so they haven't been that profitable for Morrison's and that's been a problem for them. Um, if you look at Morrison's as a whole, you know, it has hundreds of, uh, of stores around the country. The so stores, the yeah, the, yeah, the big super stores and, you know, it's saying 11 of them that's 900 jobs so you know 11 supermarkets that suggest it's not the biggest that are going to be closing uh, but certainly it's significant that they are announcing closures at a time uh, when you know the other supermarkets we're seeing um, Tesco's and uh, the others Asda, Sainsbury's etc you know things are starting to pick up a bit for them and also Aldi and Little obviously have been the big problem for all of them. Mm. Okay Steph I know you're going to look into it some more for us thanks very much. Uh, related to big stores coming out this morning and uh, Steph's got some details now we're talking about John Lewis. Yes morning to you both. Morning. Certainly very busy this morning lots as you say retailers releasing their results and John Lewis is the one I want to talk about John Lewis of course the partnership which has the stores and Waitrose has announced profits are down 26% for the six months to August it's also said that profits for the year are likely to be down too and it's because of higher pension charges and a tough trading environment well we can speak now to the chief executive of the partnership Sir Charlie Mayfield good morning to you Sir Charlie um, morning, just Steph. give us your assessment overall of the retail sector at the moment? Well, conditions are tough in grocery. Uh, as that's pretty well known. Uh, lots of prices are falling there, which is good for customers, but obviously it makes it harder for retailers to make money. In the last hour, Steph's been following that morning. Yes, morning to you both. Very busy um, in terms of the retail sector at the moment and the announcements they're making and Morrison's has announced about store closure. So let me give you the latest on that morning, everyone. Yes, Morrison's has announced 11 of its stores are to close, putting 900 jobs at risk. Sales at the supermarket chain are down 2.7%. That's for the six months to the end of August and it's when you're comparing the same shops in the same period last year. It's also announced that it's sold off the convenience bit of the business. 140 M local stores have been bought by private investors and they're not the only ones uh, with figures out this morning. It's been a challenging summer for many on the high street. Home retail group says sales at Argos are down almost 4%, mostly amongst white goods, so that's things like TVs and technology products. Waitrose also announced its first fall in sales in seven years and its owner, the John Lewis Partnership, has warned of falling profits because of higher pension costs and a tough trading environment. Uh, the clothing chain next is booking the trend. They saw a 7% rise in profits over the last six months, but they have warned they'll have to put up prices by 6% to pay the new national living wage. Now, earlier I spoke to Sir Charlie Mayfield, who's chairman of the John Lewis Partnership and president of the British Retail Consortium, and he talked about what impact the pay rises to the national living wage could have on the retail sector. 
Um, you know, prices may rise, productivity may increase, you know, jobs may fall. All those things are possible, and some of them will happen in different places to different degrees. Um, but overall, it's just, it's just a bit too soon. I mean, what we're going to be focusing on is making sure that we're improving the jobs that people are doing all the time. And, and at the end of the day, you know, better jobs uh, are, are what needs to sit behind better pay. You know. So Charlie Merfield there, who's chairman of the John Lewis Partnership, talking about what is going on in the retail sector. It's a good one to keep an eye on at the moment, isn't it, the retail sector? It's so busy. Steph, thanks. Thanks very much, Steph. And one other story for you today.